Okay. Well, I, I thank everyone for uh, coming back after lunch. I know this is the, the last session of the last day, and it's, we still have a really great turnout. So today's session is going to be discussing what's known as the box cache, which was found on San Nicolas Island at a site called uh, CASNI 14. Uh, we've been working on this for a couple of years getting it ready, and it's been a great deal of effort and time and a lot of people's dedication and helping out with this. Uh, our first speaker is going to be Bill Kindig, and we're going to start off a little bit differently because Bill has actually done a film of the discovery and how it was the uh, box cache was treated. So, Bill. All right. As Lisa already stated, this is just a short film um, describing the discovery and excavation of the box. So. make their way along San Nicolas Island's rugged North Shore. From the University of Oregon, California State University Los Angeles, and the United States Navy, the team is following a stratum of rugged afternoon, four archaeologists make their way along San Nicolas Island's rugged North Shore. From the University of Oregon, California State University Los Angeles, and the United States Navy, the team is following a stratum of rusty red soil as it appears and disappears over the uneven topography along a sea cliff. It is an ancient soil that the researchers hope will lead them to very old sites and allow them to establish with more certainty the age of the island's earliest human occupation. On a rocky point, one of the archaeologists sees what appears to be a whale rib eroding from the cliff face. Climbing down to take a closer look, what appeared to be a fossil turns out to be an historic marker. It had been intentionally placed over two redwood boxes that tell an extraordinary story of the clash of cultures that accompanied European settlement along the Pacific coast of North America. Inside the redwood boxes on this isolated cliff face was one of the most extraordinary caches of artifacts ever discovered in California. Although the boxes were exposed to erosion, they were found in a relatively good state of preservation. The fierce island winds had already begun to take their toll, and the end panel of one box had completely blown off allowing the archaeologists a glimpse of its amazing contents. The rainy season was rapidly approaching, and impending storms and erosion threatened to further damage or destroy the find. Together, the archaeologists agreed that to preserve the boxes and their contents, they had to remove them from the cliff as quickly as possible.
This was no easy task, considering that while they worked, they had to balance on a ledge no more than two feet wide, perched above a rocky shore and pounding waves. Excavation of the boxes proceeded in two stages. First, the boxes were excavated and removed from the cliff face, packaged with all of their contents in place, and taken to the Naval Environmental Facility on the island. Under controlled laboratory conditions, the interior of the boxes, which over time had filled with sand, were meticulously excavated with each artifact painstakingly uncovered and removed. This process was extensively documented with two high-definition digital video cameras filming the laboratory excavation, one providing an overview of the work area, the other a close-up of the artifacts as they were revealed. Over 3,000 still images were taken of the excavation process and the individual artifacts. Also, to capture the details and textures that photography can miss, an artist made detailed drawings of the boxes and their artifacts. Later, the archaeologists returned to the site to remove two complete water bottles found adjacent to the boxes. These are of a classic Southern California type, made from woven plant fiber coated internally with asphaltum, which renders them watertight. Although the basketry had long since deteriorated, the asphaltum coating retained its original shape and a detailed impression of the basket it once adhered to. Due to their extreme fragility, the bottles were carefully exposed and then encased in plaster before being removed. The team had set out that morning in search of the oldest sites on San Nicolas Island. What they found was something very different. It soon became evident that the boxes had been cached during California's early historic period when native and foreign cultures came into increased contact with one another. The artifacts the boxes contained represent diverse cultural influences at a moment in time when native California hung on the brink of dramatic change. The objects are primarily of Nicolaino design and materials. However, metal and glass artifacts attest to the use of European goods. Bone harpoons and ground slate or schist blades are of native Alaskan origin, probably left behind by Koniak or Aleut sea otter hunters brought to San Nicolas by commercial fur traders. Some specimens are syncretic in nature and represent a blending of styles and techniques. The Redwood Box Cache is a completely unique archaeological feature which provides an intimate look into the material culture of a people in a time of transformation. <laughs>